Hi, how about to create a pawn game on Commodore 64 using a basic programming language? Now, you may ask yourself, why would you do that? Well, I think it's a great exercise for any developer, and especially a beginner, to create a game of Pong on Commodore 64. So, the Pong is a very simple game. We only have three moving objects. Two bets, one for each player, moving up and down, and a ball moving across the screen. A ball has a speed and trajectory, and we have a collision between the ball and the bats. And why should you do all this in basic? Well, perhaps you like the challenge. Now, today I will take a look at some examples of Pong game developed in basic programming language, and I will give it a go myself and try to make something playable on Commodore 64. But before we do that, let's hear a bit about Pong history. Now, the Pong was first released by Atari in form of arcade game in 1972. Now, Atari, or to be precise, Nolan Bushman based the concept of the game on a ping pong game released on the Magnavox Odyssey, the first home video game console released that same year. So, there were some legal troubles between those two, but this is beyond the scope of this video. Nevertheless, overall result was that Atari Pong Machine was very successful. So, in 1975, Atari made his own Pong game console that was even more successful. But also Odyssey keep on tracking and releasing improvement versions of their video home console. And because that Pong game end up um, not legally protected, and very soon other companies started to join the party and building a Pong clones consoles. And very soon the market was flooded with the home Pong machines. One of those companies was our beloved Commodore. They released 2000K game console in 1977, the same year when they released the Commodore PET. And if you want to know more about the Pong consoles made by Commodore, you can check the link on the top of the screen. And we will continue with the machine that I used to play when I was a kid. So it was called Binaton TV Game or as I used to call it, the orange machine. So there were several versions of this console, I don't really remember which one I had, but I do remember it was only black and white. So on these consoles you can play a variety of games such as Pong, Tennis, Soccer, Squash, Hockey and other similar games all based on the same concept, a moving ball and the bats to hit it with. So it was not much of a nice graphic or anything like that, but it was all down to the concept of the game and the playability. And that brings us to our topic today, and that is to build a game of Pong in a basic programming language on a Commodore 64. Now this is a bit of a problem, because basic is very slow in execution and we need speed to move a ball on the screen. BASIC is definitely not a suitable programming language to develop such a game. Uh, if we want to do it properly, it would be more suitable to choose an assembly language or even a C language. Now, BASIC is a programming language of uh, choice for us today. And let's just see what have I found online while searching for the Pong game written in Commodore BASIC. So this is the first video that I would like to show you. It's called Retro Programming Pong Written in the C64 Basic and it, this is by No Name Channel and this video actually inspired me um, to make this whole episode and uh, to cover the topic of the Pong Written in the Basic language on Commodore 64 and like you see I, uh, it, looks, it looks really nice but it's extremely slow the author uses uh, sprites for the left bat and the right bat and for the ball so it does have ability for the smooth uh, movement but uh, it's really really extremely slow and I believe it's running under uh, Y simulator so at a certain point he, he will uh, turn on the warp so it will be um, some much more faster oh here we go but still this is i mean it's not playable i mean this is so much time 
uh, passes from the left to the right side and vice versa. But uh, like the author mentioned a couple of times in the video that uh, uh, the code that he uh, wrote is not optimized. So and he did this uh, just for a learning experience and uh, we will take a lo look at the code later and it's actually it's really nice code and um, it, uh, his Pong has all the elements of the game, so it has some kind of uh, small intro, intro screen, it has cool uh, graphics, it does have even sound uh, when the ball hit the bat, uh, bat. and um, um, it has this little bit of logic when they um, choose uh, the, the player one or player two, one and so on, so it's nice, it's really nice, and one thing that I'm really kind of interested to me, I think it's really, really nice solution, is if you take a notice that uh, two bats are um, changing in the opposite directions, so I think that's a really, really cool when you develop a game and you um, need to have a second player and you don't have it, so you have only um, two keys to control both uh, bats at the same time, and I think that's, that's really, really cool. So I, I like that, I like that very much. Now the second video that I want to show you is this one. And this uh, is a um, video is called C64 Basic Pong in 10 lines. So uh, slash 80 characters. Um, so not only this is a Pong written in the basic programming language, it's also a 10 liner. Um, so that means that, um, that this basic code has only 10 lines. So that's really fascinating. Uh, I'm no way to know if this is uh, true or not because um, it's, um, I don't know how to get to the code. So I I do I know, but I don't want to go there. So it's under a Facebook group somewhere. You have to join to get the code. Uh, okay, never mind. I don't care about code. So. Um, Let's play it and see what's happening here. So the author obviously um, uses characters instead of sprites that you see how the uh, ball is uh, not, uh, doesn't have a smooth movement, so it's very glitchy. Uh, the moving of the bats also. So mm, this is a, just a, this is a problem when you try to speed something up so much that to make it playable and then end up with something that is not playable at all. I mean, so, but again, we're trying to do something in basic that it's never intended to make this. So, okay, so this is it. Uh, and this is uh, one more um, a Pong written in the basic. So I just want to show you this one also. So let's try one. Uh, play one with me. Uh, how hard should I play? Easy one to up to nine possible. So let's say five. Mm, service. Okay. And you see it's kind of glitchy again, so I don't know how to move oh, my one. Okay. Ah, uh, you can see that this is the moving of movement of the pattern. Just awful. Please. Okay, just quick show how this code looks like. Yeah, <laughs> oof, oof. Oh. okay, uh, we have some data, we have some sprites, isn't that right? Hmm. So this is a code for the uh, Pong game that we saw on the first video. So I will show you just, uh, just to, to see when you receive uh, this kind of code, um, basic code, how to begin 
uh, where to find cer certain uh, <clears throat> sections of the code, where is the beginning, where is the end, where is the main loop, and so on. Uh, so, uh, first we are try to uh, find the main loop. So this is the <clears throat> this is um, heart of the, of the of the any program. So uh, what we are try to find is um, something like this. So this is explicit go to um, command. So that means that uh, without any statements, without any um, conditions uh, sorry without any conditions it's unconditioned go to 400 that means that at this point the, the, the program is looping at uh, back to the line 400 so <clears throat> it's like I will try to see okay so this is a line 400 and this is definitely our main uh, loop of this game of this program so like you see uh, you can see that uh, that we are doing some pokes and peaks and um, if statements uh, checking uh, conditions uh, doing something uh, and then uh, there are a couple go subs uh, go to additionals go to 600 so we are doing something here also uh, go to nine uh, 900, 950, and when we are done from 600, we are going back to 400. So yeah, this is definitely our main um, loop of this game. So okay, let's see what do we have here. So this is again our intro screen, so we can make some spaces here just to see so this draws the screen and then uh, then and then and then we have some random um, um, variables so that means that uh, the author uh, was cho chose to um, random uh, direction of the ball uh, on the start and then um, this is the the part that I was talking about, uh, where those uh, left and right bats are going in the opposite direction. So I I like this part, but uh, you can notice something here, and that is uh, uh, something that the author um, already mentioned a couple of times, and uh, I can show it myself here. And then this this code is not optimized. So you can see there we have a uh, peak, and then we have poke, and then peak again of the same value. So this takes uh, um, much of a CPU cycle. So this is uh, not very good um, for the speed. So this uh, it it has uh, plenty of room for optimization. Uh, also, you have uh, we have here um, two lines that goes uh, one from one below other, um, picking the same memory address twice and checking the values, and then picking the second memory address again twice. So this is definitely not uh, not very optimized. So. A um, much better option would be uh, that instead of um, this uh, uh, direct uh, absolute uh, memory addresses in form of uh, integer numbers, there are variables there. So the basic um, interpreter would interpret that much faster. So that's uh, definitely something that needs to be done here. Um, and um, this here, this section here is um, collision detector. So the author uses a, a register from the VIC-2 chip that register a collision between two sprites. In this case, the a ball and bat, so two sprites collide. And in that case, we are going to line 600, 
and 600 line is right here so the first line is um, changing the direction of the ball so when the ball hits the bat it changes directions and go uh, starts to go the other way around and what's really kind of neat the author also included a sound of hitting a ball hitting a bat or ball, bat hitting the ball whatever um so it's very cute but it's also very slow so if you have um, enough time um, during the day you can play this game and enjoy uh, enjoy it fully <laughs> um, and this section here is just um, um, kind of ending in case that uh, uh, bat misses the ball and balls passes the uh, one way or another and then we have some logic uh, whether it's a left or, or right player winner or loser and so on and here we have sprites data uh, sprites for the bat and the, for the ball now here is additional uh, problem if you choose to uh, use sprites for the phone game and you, use, you want to use the whole screen area um, additional ifs are necessary to cover the whole area because uh, for the exposition of the sprite, uh, and that includes the right, um, uh, right um, mat and the ball, uh, needs to cover this area here, which is uh, uh, it has more distance than 255 that is available in a single byte for the exposition. So in that case we are have to flip over and use the 9th bit and it, that is this um, additional poke that we have to do and uh, we have to be careful, we have to end it because uh, this byte is used by all sprites, not just uh, single sprites so we have to just use explicitly uh, a bit uh, inside that byte that is um, for that specific sprite so and then so when the ball is moving from this area here and if, when we want to cross this um, dashed line uh, we have to uh, switch and from uh, when we reach 255 with X position we switch to X uh, equals 0 but then we have to flip this ninth bit and then we go again with the X pos uh, position with up to 65 here so it's uh, additional complication and additional um, if statements uh, under the main loop that additionally slows down the CPU so uh, not very good uh, not very good for um, something that we are trying to do and that is to make it uh, playable and smooth so but i think i can um, solve this problem uh, and still use sprites uh, for my solution i i don't want to use just characters because it's it's too glitchy to it doesn't look really good um i want to use sprites to get some kind of smoothness but um I don't want to use this, I don't want to um, have this additional if, so I will move uh, my uh, Pong just on the left side of the screen. So, so it's the next day and I have uh, my code. So this is my code, I use it, uh, I use this original code from the no name channel as a template, so I reuse the logic, I reuse the uh, sprite, sprite data, uh, all just fine, it works great. Um, I did remove uh, sound of course um, for the moment because that just takes uh, more CPU cycles and I heavily optimize it so as you may see um, all of the memory addresses are now in um, some form of the variable so uh, we have um, uh, quite smaller 
screen, small, smaller backgrounds, smaller area. So I choose to <coughs> go with the uh, concept uh, to create uh, sprites. Use sprites uh, for bats uh, and the ball, same as a uh, non-name channel did. So I only choose to work on the left side of the screen so I don't have to cross um, all the way to the right so I don't have to use the ninth bit for the exposition. So um, uh, instead of uh, go to um, go to uh, command I have um, uh, next uh, for next loop that uh, goes into infinity and this is um, heavily optimized uh, code and so these are the controls for the up, up and down I choose to stay with this um, um, two keys to, to control both uh, bats I like that so the one player can have fun uh, on his own um, and we have a couple of more things so um, uh, that checks whether the ball is uh, hit the upper and lower border border of the uh, area and uh, again I use the um, collision register from the wick to detect the collision between two sprites of be precise a ball and, and the bat um, and we have um, modified this part so in case um, um, that uh, ball gets stuck between the uh, bat and the ball and keeps going le le left and right constantly we try to I try to fix that uh, I work around it um, so this is it, pretty pretty much this is it, and the only thing that uh, is um, added is that it counts the number of scores from the player 1 and player 2, or player 1 and player 1, <coughs> in this case. So, here we have it, the um, game is called Mini Pong, it's a single player game and you want to press any key to start, so let's press key. And here we have it. To do, to do, it's a mini pong game for single player, and it's playable, and you can play this for hours. Okay, it's one, zero one. Uh, it's actually pretty challenging to play and guess yourself uh, with this opposite bat. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So, could this be fun? Yeah, it could. Um, maybe not for hours, but a couple of minutes. A couple of minutes a day with this um, game and it's all it takes. <laughs> Mini pong. Yeah, and it's all in basic, right? Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Yeah. This is it. This is the Mini Pong. Um, game written in Commodore 64 basic and the only way that I could think of uh, make it uh, playable <laughs> because uh, otherwise it's simply not possible to create anything fluid in, in, in basic. So this is all for today, uh, I hope you enjoyed this little mini pong um, episode and if you like this video you can subscribe uh, and if you want to subscribe you can comment or vice versa and here we go mini pong yes yes